Hello everyone and welcome back to another video on our channel Immortal News. Today we'll be presenting a list of famous celebrities who have passed away, with announcements of their passing made in the last 24 hours. As always, we have special tributes in our today's top headline section. Before we proceed, we kindly ask for your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Let's begin, thank you. Number 8. Bobby Jean Carter, A Life Remembered Beyond the Spotlight Bobby Jean Carter, sister to musicians Nick and Aaron Carter, passed away at the age of 41, leaving behind a legacy touched by both creativity and struggle. Her mother, Jane Carter, expressed deep shock and grief over the loss of her daughter, marking a third such tragedy for the family. Bobby Jean, often known as BJ, was born into a family where music and the public eye were constants. During the peak of her brother's careers, she played a crucial role, particularly with Aaron, serving as a wardrobe stylist and makeup artist during his tours in the early 2000s. Her contributions to the music business, though often behind the scenes, were vital in shaping the public images of her brothers. Her life, however, was not without its challenges. Bobby Jean's struggles with addiction and substance abuse were not only personal battles, but were also highlighted in the family's e-reality TV show, House of Carters, where she appeared in eight episodes. Despite these struggles, she lived much of her life away from the public eye, choosing a path of relative privacy and obscurity. Jane Carter's heartrending statement brings to light the immense pain of a parent losing a child, while also highlighting the plight of Bobby Jean's eight-year-old daughter, Bella, who now faces life without both her parents. The Carters have faced more than their share of tragedy. The family lost Aaron Carter last year in a drug-related drowning incident and their sister Leslie in 2012 due to an overdose. Bobby Jean's life, marked by its ups and downs, reflects a journey of resilience in the face of personal challenges. Her death is not just a loss for the Carter family, but also a reminder of the often unseen battles many face away from the limelight. The family requests privacy during this difficult time as they come to terms with this profound loss. Tribute to Bobby Jean Carter. Number 7. Laura Lynch, a foundational voice in country music's landscape. Laura Lynch, a pioneering spirit in the country music world and a founding member of the iconic band Dixie Chicks, now known as The Chicks, tragically passed away in a car crash near El Paso, Texas, at the age of 65. Lynch, alongside Robin Lynn Macy and Marty Irwin, formed The Dixie Chicks in 1989. Her role as the upright bassist and lead vocalist was integral to the early sound and identity of the band, which later evolved into one of the most influential groups in modern country music. Although Lynch departed from the band in 1995, three years before the Dixie Chicks' major breakthrough with wide open spaces, her contributions laid the groundwork for the band's subsequent success. The Texas Department of Public Safety confirmed the details of the tragic accident revealing that Lynch's vehicle was hit by another car attempting to overtake on the two-lane highway. The investigation into the crash is ongoing, as authorities work to understand the circumstances leading to this unfortunate event. The other driver involved in the collision sustained non-life-threatening injuries. Lynch's departure from the band did not diminish her impact on the country music scene. Her work with the Dixie Chicks during their formative years helped to shape a distinctive sound that blended traditional country with contemporary elements, paving the way for future female artists in the genre. Survived by her husband, Mac Tull, and their daughter, Lynch leaves behind a rich musical legacy, marked by her pioneering role in a band that would go on to achieve critical acclaim and worldwide fame. Her passing is a significant loss to the music community, one that will be felt deeply by fans, fellow musicians, and all who were touched by her talent and passion for music. Tribute to Laura Lynch. Number 6. Ryan Minor, 
a remarkable dual sport legacy. Ryan Miner, an American athlete celebrated for his dual sport prowess in both basketball and baseball, passed away on December 22 at age 49, following a battle with colon cancer. Miner's distinguished career in sports and his impactful contributions as a coach and manager left a significant mark on the sports world. Miner's athletic journey began in Hammond High School, Oklahoma, where he excelled in baseball, earning a spot on the 1992 Rawlings High School All-America Baseball third team. He continued to shine at the University of Oklahoma, leading the Sooners to the 1994 College World Series Championship. In the same period, Miner also made his mark in basketball, becoming an All-American player and the Big Eight Player of the Year in 1995. Drafted by the Philadelphia 76 ERs in the 1996 NBA Draft, Miner briefly explored a basketball career before focusing on baseball. After playing for the Oklahoma City Cavalry in the Continental Basketball Association, he returned to baseball, drafted by the Baltimore Orioles in 1996. Miner debuted in Major League Baseball in 1998 and is notably remembered for starting in place of Cal Ripken Jr ending Ripken's historic consecutive game streak. He played with both the Orioles and Montreal Expos before moving to various other teams, including independent leagues. After retiring from professional sports, Miner devoted himself to coaching and managing, nurturing young talents in baseball. He and his twin brother Damon, a fellow MLB player, shared memorable moments at the University of Oklahoma, adding a unique dimension to their family's sports legacy. Ryan Miner's legacy is marked by his exceptional skills in two major sports and his commitment to guiding future athletes. His journey exemplifies versatility, resilience, and a profound passion for sports. Tribute to Ryan Miner. Number 5. Mike Nussbaum, A Centennial Life in Theater and Film Mike Nussbaum, a revered figure in the American theater and film industry, passed away at his home in Chicago on December 23rd, just shy of his 100th birthday. Born into a Jewish family on December 29, 1923, Nussbaum's journey from a World War II Army messenger to a distinguished actor and director is a remarkable tale of talent and tenacity. Raised in the Albany Park area of Chicago, Nussbaum's early life was marked by his service during World War II, where he notably dispatched the official notification of Germany's surrender while working under General Dwight D. Eisenhower. Post-war, he joined his brother-in-law in an extermination business, a path far removed from the glitz of showbiz. Nussbaum's foray into acting began in community theater in the 1950s, blossoming in the 1960s when he became a pivotal figure in Chicago's burgeoning professional theatrical community. It was here that he met a young David Mamet, a relationship that would significantly shape his career. Nussbaum became a frequent collaborator in Mamet's plays, gracing stages both on and off Broadway, as well as in Chicago. His filmography is equally impressive, featuring in classics like Field of Dreams, House of Games, Things Change, Fatal Attraction, and Men in Black. Nussbaum also ventured into directing, with notable works including Where Have You Gone, Jimmy Stewart by Art Shea, married first to Annette Brenner until her death in 2003, and then to Julie Brudlos in 2004. Nussbaum was a devoted family man, leaving behind three children, Jack, Karen, and Susan. Mike Nussbaum's century-spanning career is a testament to his enduring talent and influence. His contributions to theater and film have left a memorable mark, and his legacy will continue to inspire future generations. Tribute to Mike Nussbaum. Number 4. Ian Pepperell, a radiant talent in radio and television. Ian Pepperell, an esteemed actor renowned for his portrayal of Roy Tucker in the iconic radio drama The Archers, passed away on December 22, aged 53, after a prolonged illness. His demise leaves a significant void in the world of British radio and television. 
Pepperell's remarkable versatility and vocal talent made him a cherished member of the Archers cast. Jeremy Howe, the editor of the show, praised Ian for his exceptional skill in balancing humor with emotional depth, creating a relatable and multifaceted character in Roy Tucker. His portrayal of Roy as a complex individual, juggling geniality with anxiety and humor with pathos, resonated deeply with the audience, making the character a beloved figure in the show. Beyond the world of radio, Pepperell's talents extended to television, where he made notable appearances in popular series like East Enders. His ability to adapt to various roles and mediums showcased his comprehensive acting skills and dedication to his craft. Pepperell's untimely death in the prime of his career is a tragic loss to the acting community. He was not only admired for his professional achievements, but also for his warmth and camaraderie among his peers. His absence will be profoundly felt in Ambridge, where his character Roy Tucker became a household name, and by the millions of the Archer's listeners who cherished his performances. Ian Pepperell's legacy in radio and television will be remembered for its authenticity, emotional range, and the joy he brought to his audience. His life and work continue to inspire upcoming actors in the industry. Tribute to Ian Pepperell. Number 3. Ian Punnett, a distinguished voice in American broadcasting. Ian Punnett, a renowned American radio broadcaster, author, professor, and Episcopal deacon, passed away at the age of 63. His multifaceted career in broadcasting and education left a memorable mark in the fields of radio and academia. Punnett's broadcasting journey began in the 1980s at WLRW in his college town, where he co-hosted a morning show. He gained national recognition as the Saturday night host of the paranormal-themed, widely syndicated show Coast to Coast AM. His struggle with tinnitus in 2011 led him to step down from his regular hosting duties, although he continued to contribute as a guest host after pursuing a doctoral degree. Throughout his career, Punnett was known for his versatile roles in broadcasting. He worked under the pseudonym Ian Case in the Quad Cities and Nashville, Tennessee. His talk radio stints included WGN in Chicago and WGST in Atlanta. In Minneapolis, St. Paul, he hosted Ian and Marjorie on KTMI-FM with his wife Marjorie, showcasing his ability to connect with diverse audiences. Punnett's academic pursuits were as impressive as his broadcasting career. He held a Master of Divinity degree from Columbia Theological Seminary and a PhD from the Walter Cronkite School of Journalism and Mass Communication at Arizona State University. He was ordained as a deacon in the Episcopal Church and later joined the faculty at Kansas State University, where he became the chief operator of the campus radio station KSDB-FM. In addition to his radio and academic careers, Punnett made significant contributions as an author. His children's books, Dizzy the Mutt with the Propeller Butt and Jacula the Vampire Dog, were well received. His book, How to Pray When You're Pissed at God, offered a fresh perspective on expressing anger in prayers, drawing from his experiences as a chaplain. Ian Punnett's legacy is marked by his innovative approach to broadcasting, his dedication to education, and his thoughtful exploration of spirituality. His unique voice and insightful perspectives enrich the lives of countless listeners and students. Tribute to Ian Punnett. Number 2. Frank Riggs, a dedicated life in public service and education. Frank Riggs, a distinguished American figure recognized for his impactful roles in military, law enforcement, education and politics, passed away on December 22 at 73. His varied career path showcased a deep commitment to public welfare and educational advancement. Born in Louisville, Kentucky in 1950, Riggs served in the United States Army from 1972 to 1975. This experience laid the groundwork for his subsequent roles in law enforcement as a police officer and deputy sheriff in California. 
he extended his public service into the realm of education, becoming a key member of the Windsor Unified School District Board of Trustees from 1984 to 1988. Riggs's entrepreneurial skills were evident in his successful stint as a real estate executive. However, his true passion for education emerged prominently in 1999 when he joined the Charter Schools Development Corporation. His leadership was pivotal in elevating CSDC's stature in the educational sector, significantly impacting charter school facilities nationwide. In Congress, Riggs represented California's first district, where he served on influential committees and notably authored the Charter School Expansion Act. His legislative efforts profoundly affected the charter school landscape in the U.S. Despite unsuccessful bids for the U.S. Senate and Arizona gubernatorial races, Riggs remained committed to public service. His political journey culminated in a run for the Arizona Superintendent of Public Instruction, reflecting his enduring dedication to education reform. Known for his principled approach, Riggs was an advocate for transparency and accountability in governance, as evident in his stance against the Gulf War resolution and involvement in the Gang of Seven. Frank Riggs's passing is a significant loss to the domains of public service and education. His unwavering dedication to improving educational infrastructure and his commitment to public welfare leave behind a lasting legacy. Tribute to Frank Riggs. Today's top headlines. News 1. The football world is mourning the loss of Ivan Almeida, a respected Paraguayan football manager and former player who passed away at the age of 45 due to complications from aortic valve surgery. Almeida, who also had a successful career as a goalkeeper, made a significant impact both on and off the field. Born in Asuncion, Almeida notably played for Olympia and Sportivo Patria. After hanging up his gloves, he transitioned into coaching, initially working as an assistant under his father with the Guatemala national team and Olympia. Almeida's managerial journey saw him at the helm of several teams, including Olympia de Ita, Sportivo Trinidense, and Resistencia. He also served as a sports commentator and returned as an assistant at Sol de America. In 2021, he briefly took over as interim manager of the club after his father's dismissal. His most recent role was managing the under-17 side of Olympia and leading River Plate Asuncion in the top tier. Despite the challenges, including relegation, Almeida's dedication and passion for the game were evident. News 2. Jim Ross, the iconic WWE Hall of Famer and AEW commentator, has shared an encouraging update on his health following recent challenges. Known affectionately to wrestling fans as good old JR, Ross has been absent from his usual road duties due to a persistent leg wound exacerbated by travel and complications from diabetes. In a recent episode of his podcast, Grilling JR, Ross discussed his ongoing health issues, including dangerously high blood sugar levels, which he described as being death material at one point. He revealed that he's been managing his condition with daily insulin shots and monitoring his blood sugar levels, which have shown improvement. Ross is gearing up for another step in his recovery involving the installation of a port in his arm for administering intravenous antibiotics. This treatment is expected to effectively address the issues with his leg. Expressing his determination, Ross stated, I've been dealing with this thing for over a year. I'm tired of it. Though his wound is partially healed, Ross is awaiting heavy-duty antibiotics to fully eradicate the problem. Eager to proceed with the treatment, he expressed a willingness to undergo the procedure as soon as possible. News 3. Ryan O'Neill, the celebrated actor known for his role in the iconic film Love Story, has passed away at the age of 82. According to his death certificate obtained by The Blast, the cause of death was congestive heart failure. O'Neill had been battling cardiomyopathy, a disease affecting the heart muscle, for several years. The actor, whose career spanned several decades, was also diagnosed with prostate cancer in 2012 and chronic leukemia in 2001. Despite his health challenges, O'Neill continued to leave an indelible mark in Hollywood. He earned an Oscar nomination for his performance in the 1970 film Love Story 
and appeared alongside Barbara Streisand in What's Up Doc and the main event. O'Neill's memorable role in the 1973 film Paper Moon, where he starred with his daughter Tatum O'Neill, further cemented his place in cinematic history. His personal life, including his long-term relationship with actress Farrah Fawcett, was as well known as his professional achievements. News 4. The academic and music world is in mourning after the tragic death of Lenka Hlavkova, a distinguished Czech musicologist and head of the Institute of Musicology at Charles University. Hlavkova, aged 49, was one of the victims in a devastating shooting at the Faculty of Arts of Charles University on December 21st, which also claimed the lives of 13 others. Hlavkova's academic journey was remarkable. She completed her master's studies in musicology at Charles University in 1998 and received her PhD in 2004. Her commitment to the field took her to Humboldt University of Berlin for a doctoral internship. Volavkova held various positions at the Institute of Musicology, serving as director from 2012 to 2015 and resuming the role in December 2021. Her contributions to musicology were significant, with specializations in Renaissance music and the musical culture of Central Europe in the late Middle Ages. Lavkova was also a respected member of the European Academy of Sciences and Arts since 2019. Her research into Czech music of the 15th and 16th centuries and efforts to contextualize musical traditions in the Hussite and post-Hussite periods were widely acclaimed. News 5. Gunther Emmerlich, a renowned German operatic bass and a prominent television presenter, passed away in Dresden on December 19th at the age of 79. Born in Eisenberg during the final year of World War II, Emmerlich overcame early personal tragedies, including the loss of both parents, to become a distinguished figure in the world of opera and entertainment. Emmerlich's journey to stardom began with his studies at the Franz Liszt Academy in Weimar, followed by further training in Dresden. He made his debut in Karl Orff's D. Kluge in 1978 with the Dresden State Opera, where he became a notable member. His repertoire included a variety of roles, from Osman in Mozart's Die Entführung aus dem Serail to Tivia in The Fiddler on the Roof. Apart from his operatic achievements, Emmerlich was also a jazz enthusiast, playing the banjo, and a celebrated TV host in both East and reunited Germany. He presented several popular shows, including the television cabaret Schokolade and Zauberhafte Heimat endearing him to audiences across the country. Emmerlich's personal life saw him married to actress Anne Catherine Emmerlich, with whom he shared a son. The couple separated in 2014 after 35 years of marriage. Emmerlich also had a son from a previous relationship. News 6. Dimas Filgueras, a celebrated figure in Brazilian football as both a player and a manager, passed away at the age of 79. Filgueras' journey in football began with Botafogo, where he played from 1963 to 1970. He then moved to Fortaleza in 1971 and subsequently to Ceara in 1972. His tenure at Ceara was marked by 133 appearances and back-to-back -back state championships in 1975 and 1976, cementing his status as a club legend. After hanging up his boots, Phil Gueras remained deeply involved with Ceara serving in various capacities, including several stints as interim manager. His commitment to the club spanned an incredible 46 years, ending only in January 2016. In his later years, Filgueras battled Alzheimer's disease. His passing on December 22, 2023, is mourned across the football community in Brazil and beyond. Filgueras' legacy in Brazilian football, both on and off the pitch, will be remembered for his dedication, skill, and contributions to the sport. Number 1. Wilf Lunn, a tribute to the master inventor and eccentric entertainer. Wilf Lunn, the quintessential English eccentric scriptwriter, prop designer, and inventor, passed away at the age of 81, leaving behind a legacy of surreal inventions and whimsical entertainment. His life was a testament to the power of imagination, and he is remembered for his unique contributions to the world of entertainment and beyond. Born in Rastrick, Yorkshire, on March 29, 1942, to deaf parents, Lund's childhood was filled with creativity and inventiveness. He grew up crafting miniature bicycles and exploring the realms of his imagination. His distinctive style, 
characterized by oversized glasses, a ginger handlebar mustache, and often a straw boater, made him an endearingly madcap figure. Lund's career in entertainment began with his role as a regular guest on Tony Hart's Vision On, a children's show for hearing-impaired audiences. He captivated audiences with his bizarre bicycle-related machines, including the humane pigeon catcher and the more ominous duck catcher and choir boy tuner. His creations, often blending humor with a touch of the macabre, delighted and startled viewers in equal measure. His inventive spirit wasn't confined to the studio. Lunn once rode an elaborate tricycle from London to Woburn Abbey to protest against artificial foods. He also performed in the Huddersfield Novelty Suicide Company, a stage show that featured his unique brand of humor and inventiveness. Lund's first marriage to Die North produced four daughters and a son. He later married Elizabeth Hindle, with whom he shared a colorful and creative life until her passing. Wilf Lund's contributions to entertainment, art, and community exemplify a life lived outside the box. His legacy as an inventor, entertainer, and a true eccentric will continue to inspire those who dare to dream differently. Tribute to Wilf Lund.